Humans were meant to breathe through their nose. If you look at any animal, they are all breathing through their nose except for humans. Well, mainly westernized humans. But look at even dogs, you know, when they're excited and they're running around, you'll see them with their mouth open, they start panting. But at all other times, you'll see their mouth closed. Like look at a dog sleeping. Usually their mouth is closed and they're breathing through their nose. And actually, mouth breathing in animals is a sign that something went wrong. And it's a sign that the animal is sick. Either they're sick or they have some sort of skeletal deformity, but something is not normal. And why is it that humans are the only animal in the world that is breathing through their mouth so much? In the last century, westernized humans have started using their mouths more and more. And not just because they're talking more, because they're breathing way more than before. So what does this mouth breathing do? Well, it affects many things. There's a lot of studies that are linking mouth breathing with breathing issues and sleep apnea and also skeletal deformities and a whole list of different things like your posture will change, your diet can even change from the way that you breathe. We can get into that in another video. But the point is we get way more benefits from breathing through our nose that we do not get from breathing through our mouth. So how can using a nasal dilator help specifically in preventing things like sleep apnea? Well, there was a study looking at just that. So they looked at people with sleep apnea and these were people who were considered more moderate sleep apnea. So their AHI score or their apnea hypopnea index was about 15 to 30. So they had 15 to 30 events per every hour when they were sleeping where they would either stop breathing or their oxygen levels would drop. Now this study was looking at the effects of using a nasal decongestant and using a nasal dilator on sleep apnea. No surgery, no CPAP, nothing else. Just using a nasal dilator strip and any nasal decongestant that you can get at any drugstore, even Amazon. So they were tracking the participants' sleep overnight using something called polysomnograms, which are basically what you use when you get a sleep study. And there was two different groups. So the first group, they actually sprayed a nasal dilator in their nose before sleeping and also four hours into their sleep. And they also used a nasal dilator strip. The other group was a placebo. So they sprayed a placebo up their nose and they also used a placebo nasal dilator strip. Maybe wondering how the heck could they put a placebo strip on someone's nose? Well, it's basically it's something called the sham dilator strip. It was identical to the other strip, but there was no plastic core. So it wasn't actually doing anything. It was just putting a piece of tape over their nose. So I guess this helped eliminate bias, but I really don't think I would have any bias if I was sleeping, but hey, it helps in the credibility of the study, right? So what they found is the placebo group had 39% more mouth breathing at nighttime, but the group that used the decongestant and the nasal dilator strip had only 8% mouth breathing while sleeping. So simply using a nasal dilator and using a nasal decongestant, they were able to reduce people's average mouth breathing from 39% to just 8%. Now, it wasn't just that. It also improved their sleep apnea. So the group that had the decongestant and the nasal dilator strip, their apnea scores went down a whole 12 times per hour. So they were able to move these patients who were in moderate sleep apnea to either mild sleep apnea or not even having sleep apnea at all. So simply using a nasal dilator strip and a nasal decongestant spray actually cured these people of their sleep apnea. They also slept better. So the group that had the nasal dilator strip and had the decongestant, they had less nasal obstruction and they also had more sleep efficiency. So they got less of the stage one sleep, which is your kind of initial sleep stage where you try to get into the deeper stages. And they had more stage two, stage three non-REM and REM sleep. Basically what you got to get out of that is those are your deeper sleeping stages. And a lot of people lack in getting that sleep. And that's where our body can actually heal. And that's where it helps energize us. And getting these components of sleep will not only improve your sleep, but also improve your sleep efficiency and also make you more energized throughout the day. 
And also this group had less interruptions with their sleep. So they were able to sleep a whole night without waking up much easier by simply using a nasal dilator strip and a nasal decongestant spray. So what do you take away from this? Well, you take away that simply breathing through your nose and relieving some sort of nasal obstruction lowers people's sleep apnea. So we know that the nose is involved in sleep apnea, and this is just further proving that. Now, another study was even looking at how nasal dilators can help people snoring and sleep apnea. So it was looking at nasal dilators and how it affected people with sleep apnea or habitual snoring, basically people who snore a lot. And the way that they dilated the nose, they dilated the anterior part of the nose, so the valve region of the nose. And in the study, there was 10 subjects that were either snoring or had obstructive sleep apnea. And their obstructive sleep apnea scale was all over the charts. They had people who had an AHI of 1.8, so no sleep apnea, but they did snore all the way up to 60, which is extremely, extremely severe sleep apnea. And in the study, they used polysomnography, which is, again, what you use in a sleep study, and also rhinomanometry, which is what measures your nasal airway resistance. I probably butchered that name, but you get the picture. Now, they compared these two groups, and they compared these two results with and without using that plastic nasal dilator. So when the dilator was used, there was an 18% increase in nasal airflow. So they were able to breathe through their nose way easier. And also there was a huge reduction in their snoring frequency and also their snoring severity. So they were snoring less and they were being less obnoxious in the first place. So they also found that their sleep apnea improved. So their sleep apnea number, their AHI originally was 1.8 to 60. That was the range. And it dropped to a range of 1.3 to 15. So in other words, it dropped from an average of 18 to 6.4. So there was a 47% decrease in their sleep apnea by simply putting a little piece of plastic in their nose that helped dilate their nose. So nasal dilators are really cool because they're so simple to use and they're something that you can use at home. Now the thing is it doesn't always work, right? Because you might have some anatomy problem like a deviated septum or you might have swollen turbinates. Now some of these issues could be because you just don't use your nose enough and the more you do it, your nasal passages will dilate. But sometimes it could be allergies or other issues going on that you have to get a surgery done. But for a lot of people, just using the nasal dilator strip will help them a lot. So dilators are also really good for something called nasal valve stenosis. So next time you're in front of the mirror, take a really deep inhale through your nose. And you might see that part of your nose kind of collapses. So if you see, like it kind of pushes in around here or even higher up in your nose, that is what's called nasal valve stenosis. So it could be internal, which is when it's higher up in the nose, or it could be external, your external valve collapsing, which is called the ala of your nose. Now this could also just be affecting one side of your nose, or it could be affecting both sides. But a cool trick you can try is called the caudal maneuver. So you put your hands on each side of your face, and you want to pull up and out, so kind of like this. And you want to see how much easier that makes it for you to breathe through your nose. If that helps you a ton, like on a scale of one to 10, if it's like an eight, nine or 10 and you're able to breathe so much easier, you might wanna to go to an ENT because you might need some sort of procedure done if that's what it takes for you to breathe through your nose properly. Now there's different types of nasal dilators out there. And me personally, I use something called Breathe Right Strips. You can get them on Amazon or any grocery store. They might not work if you have a lot of lotion on your face, it might fall off. And they also might rip your skin off if you have some weak skin, but these are the easiest ones to use because it's just a piece of tape that goes over your nose. There's also an internal nasal dilator that actually goes into your nose. And the cool thing about this one is you can actually crank it on each side. So let's say that your nose collapses more on your left side, you can crank the left side open a little bit more and that'll kind of even out your <clears throat> nasal passages. So a cool brand I've heard about is the Mute Dilator, and you can get this on Amazon or anywhere again. And there was a study that was comparing four different nasal dilators, and 
The reason I didn't mention the other two is because the other two didn't really have as good results in this study. So I'm only going to mention the two best dilators out there. They were measuring things called the external nasal dilator, which is that strip, nasal stents, nasal clips, which is that internal dilator I was talking about, and also septal stimulators. They found that the two dilators that I mentioned, the strip tape and also the mute dilator, they can actually relieve obstruction from that nasal collapse. So when you take a sharp inhale and your nose kind of collapses, those dilators are great at preventing that. And this is a huge alternative to surgery in a lot of people because no one wants to go through a surgery and no one wants to get a CPAP machine. And if there's a really easy way to avoid it, why not take it? A lot of the damaging effects of sleep apnea and improper breathing can be prevented if addressed at an early age. So childhood. Now, this is especially true if you use mouth tape and a nasal dilator to reinforce nasal breathing. So something your doctors probably won't tell you about your sleep apnea is how did it even happen in the first place? So right now with sleep apnea, we have an epidemic going on and not enough people are talking about it. So for those of you who don't know, sleep apnea is when you wake up multiple times when you're sleeping but it's a little more complicated than that. It's usually because of some sort of